Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Farzee Show here at the Stephen Singer Studios. And let's start it off on a positive note. Yes, we'll get to the Flyers later. But let's start it off on a positive note. Yeah, we'll get to the amazing pro days yesterday by two guys that will never be with the Eagles, unfortunately. But let's start out on a positive note. Today is opening day. Yesterday, Bryce Harper put this out on social media. Just look at look at the majesty. Look at it. Just him gazing out onto the field at Citizens Bank Park, hat flipped backwards, sunglasses into the back of the head and all that stuff, and just home sweet filler there at the bottom. Bryce Harper and the boys back in town, 3.05 start time today as they welcome the Atlanta Braves to South Philly to get the season started. I was just talking to uh, producer extraordinaire J- Jim Hyden before we started the show, and you know what? He just thinks today should be a national holiday, and I don't disagree. I don't disagree even a little bit. It's opening day. We're all in first place. We're all in last place, but we're all in first place, and we can all just embrace baseball and fans being back at the stadium. Ah, and the weather, unfortunately, is not going to be nice. It's going to be like 48, 49 degrees. There's going to be a wind chill. You don't want to hear a wind chill in baseball unless it's October. But anyway, there's going to be a wind chill. It's not going to be great. But I'm sure the 8,000-some people at the uh, at the bank today will be enjoying just seeing their baseball team play. And let's not forget that last year you had a great representation for the fan base with the uh, Phillies Fandemic crew out there in left field, in the left field corner. But now you get to be inside the stadium watching this team play baseball. And like it didn't even occur to me. Like I just knew it had been over a year. But 18 months 18 months before you were allowed at Citizens Bank Park, the last time you were allowed at Citizens Bank Park to watch the Phillies play. So let's just embrace that. Let's enjoy that. And and all I can think about are those fans walking through the turnstiles today, walking into their seat, getting to sit down, and just taking in a ball game. Uh, Joe Girardi said that it was just great to see people there uh, in, in spring training at the ballpark again. He goes, now it feels like you're getting a piece of your life back. It feels like you're starting to put those pieces of your life back together once you start to see fans at Citizens Bank Park being able to take in uh, a ball game. And and I couldn't agree more. It's going to feel so normal. I just remember watching an Eagles game this past football season and hearing people at uh, at uh, at the link, and uh, I remember a play happened with the Eagles, and it started. They started booing, and it was real boos. And I thought, ah, let me just bask in this for a second, just with, just knowing that fans are allowed back in the stadium, and and obviously we've had it with the uh, with with the, with the Flyers, and we're getting it with the Sixers and all that. And it's just a a great feeling uh, to know that you guys will be back at the stadium today. So hit us up in our comments today, whether that be on uh, YouTube, whether that be on uh, Twitch, whether that be Facebook, whatever it might be. Uh, hit us up in the comments today. Let us know if you're going to go down to the game and just how excited you are to be back at a stadium today. So uh, we definitely want to hear from you throughout the show. And bundle up. Uh, apparently, again, it's going to be a wind chill. Not going to be a lot of sunshine. Little, maybe some scattered showers here and there. Little sprinkles. Little, I don't even want to say showers. Little sprinkles. We'll call it little sprinkles. And uh, we'll see how it goes uh, for everybody else today. But congratulations to all the people going down there to see BP today. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you guys on TV. Looking forward to hearing you guys come through the television to celebrate opening day. Aaron Nola on the bump today. Uh, I, uh, I did a one-hour corporate event yesterday uh, for a buddy of mine. And in that one-hour corporate event, you know who I got to interview? I got to interview. You know who I got to have a conversation with? Brad Lidge yesterday. And I'm thinking to myself, this is amazing. I, I Not that I needed anything to get me amped up for opening day, but to have this conversation with Brad Lidge, who is one of the most enjoyable athletes you could ever have a conversation with who's ever played in Philadelphia. Anyone I've ever talked to in Philadelphia, Brad Lidge is like top guy on the list just to have a conversation with, just because he's such an enjoyable guy, such an interesting guy, and oh yeah, he happened to win a World Series. But just talking to him got me even more amped up for opening day. I don't know if you could tell. And he had some pretty interesting things to say about the Phillies bullpen. Uh, He thinks the Phillies right now overall could be a wild card team. So let's hope that 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 happens, because that means you're getting the meaningful games in September, and that also means you're going to get some playoff baseball. 
All right, so I'm all in. Yeah, sure. You want to go for a wild card team? They could absolutely win a wild card. This is known as the toughest division in baseball this season. Tim Kirchner has spoken at length about that. The a the uh, NL East is the toughest division in baseball. If the Phillies can get a wild card at least out of that, I'm I'm all ready to party. Bring us that postseason baseball back to us for the first time in a decade. He also talked about. The uh, mindset you have to have in the bullpen. Got some different guys this year. He likes what the Phillies have done with the bullpen, especially with Archie Bradley. Uh, thinks Hector Neris has it uh, in the right spot between the ears to be a closer. And Joe Girardi, of course, named him the closer yesterday. We'll find out who officially is going to be your starting center fielder today going up against the Atlanta Braves. So that'll be interesting as well. But uh, just just having a great conversation with Bradley just got me even more amped up for opening day. So whoever's going down today, good luck to you. Have fun. Just embrace it. For, for, for all the, the joy that it should be bringing you, make sure it gives you every ounce of that joy. Uh, now let's get into some other things today. By the way, to help you, help you get in the mood a little bit more for opening day, Mickey Morandini is on the show today. He's, he's taking part in a great charitable cause for Darren Dalton Foundation. Uh, go to DarrenDaltonFoundation.org to find out more info on really anything the Darren Dalton Foundation is doing. But Mickey Morandini is an ambassador for the Phillies former coach in the minor league system, former first base coach with the Phillies as well. Uh, uh, World Series, he obviously played on the 93 World Series team. Uh, so uh, a lot to get to with Mickey Morandini. But go to DarrenDaltonFoundation.org and check out what he's going to be doing on April 23rd, uh, Painting for Dutch. And it's going to be with my old friend, uh, Trey Thomas, as a matter of fact. And they're going to help raise some money for the Darren Dalton Foundation. And uh, uh, Mickey's going to be on with us in a little bit today to talk about the state of the Phillies right now. That great charitable event that he's doing, a charitable event that he's doing for his former teammate and friend, obviously, and Darren Dalton. And uh, I just can't wait to talk baseball with Mickey Morandini yet again. So make sure you guys check us out. Uh, we're going to have that interview for you coming up in just a minute. Uh, before we get to Flyers hockey, before we get to the 76ers, let's get into what happened yesterday in the world of football. <sighs> this has been growing. Like, I didn't want to pile on and just be pissed off that the Eagles moved back in the draft. I wanted to just take a minute and go, okay. Let's assess the situation for a second and see where the, the, the Eagles are at. And when they traded back, I think at the first round pick next year, still the top 12 is still good. Uh, they move out of the hunt for Kyle Pitts. They move out of the hunt for Jamar Chase. And this has kind of been growing for, for a while now. Uh, I The day after, my initial reaction was if it was any other team, the team we didn't follow that well, and they made a move to drop back a little bit and gain a first-round pick next year, stay in the top 15, stay in the top 12 this year. Uh, you think, oh, you know what? That's actually not a bad idea. And plus, they get three first-round picks the following year, possibly, with uh, what could happen with the other the trade they made with the quarterback and all. That good move for that team. The fact that it's the Eagles and it's Howie Roseman, again, takes us away from that chart I gave you, where it's like if you're picking in that top six, it goes, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. In this range right here, idiot proof. Anybody can pretty much pick in there and get it right. Nah, let's stay in there because we don't have a lot of confidence in the front office making a pick outside of the one through six. Then you go down to seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and it's like, uh oh, a lot more room for error, a lot less idiot proof. Not idiot proof at all, as a matter of fact. Maybe the top 10, you can say it's idiot proof. Yeah, we're in the 12. Eagles are in the 12. So that doesn't make me feel good. That was my initial reaction. <coughs> Now, after watching Jamar Chase post a 4 just to be more specific, on his pro day yesterday, and he's already a freak of nature, athletically speaking, anyway, go up and catch anything. Huh. You guess what? I know that there's uh, really adorable theories about him being available at 12. That's beautiful. Uh, congratulations on having that thought, because I know it's going to make you feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, he ain't going to be there at 12, folks. All right. And then you watch Kyle Pitts, who we already knew is a freak of nature, the guy that was number one on my list for the Eagles to get at number six overall. He goes out there yesterday, runs the 4-4-4-40 that we already knew about, right, because we saw the video from it before, but then goes out there also and, and puts up 225-22 times on the bench press. And I know these these are all combine-type numbers, not end-all, be-all, but it does prove the guy is just a freak. He is a freak of nature, two guys, two freaks of nature, being rolled out for our enjoyment yesterday and really what is not even our enjoyment as Eagles fans because we know the Eagles have no shot at getting them in the NFL draft now. It just makes you want them even more. 
And I would have been so giddy and happy today to, to do a show after their pro day. And when everyone's all geeked up, all the people that are they're sitting there, doing, oh, wait, hold on, it's a pro day. So is it an official time? It's not official time because it's a pro day. And all the people still just losing their minds over the fact that you had the 4-3 speed with a guy like Jamar Chase and you already had 225 pounds uh, put up 22 times by Kyle Pitts. It just makes you think about it even more. Ugh! And the Eagles aren't there. The Eagles aren't going to be there to select either of those players at number six. Now, either one of them could have been off the board, but here's my guarantee you, by six, not both of them are not going to be off the board, folks, in this NFL draft, which is now later this month. All right. Happy, happy April 1st, by the way. And uh, for anybody out there, uh, always keep your head on a swivel on April 1st. Wait for that. You know, whatever. Wait for that April Fool's joke. We don't need April Fool's jokes today. But anyway, uh, I it just has me longing for those two athletes more. And I, I went in a dark place yesterday, and I try to avoid dark places, right? But I couldn't help it. And it was like, will the Eagles ever take someone that could be – like? Like, I feel like you have to fit into a wedge with the Eagles. Like, you have, like, like Jalen Rager. Yeah, you could pass it off as taking him. This is before, this is before they, uh, Justin Jefferson was drafted. This is just when Jalen Rager was drafted. You could pass it off as, oh, well, we want to build on speed. We want to make sure we have speed, right? You could pass it off as that. But really, that's still wedging somebody into your, your uh, pie here. All right? This is uh, wedging somebody into your team. And... If you take Justin Jefferson, that guy has a, has the star potential. I never thought Jalen Rager had star potential. I think he has very good wide receiver fit into your scheme type of potential, but not overall NFL-wide breakout star characteristics. I thought Justin Jefferson had that going into the draft, which is why I was banging my head against the wall that Jalen Rager was taken and not Justin Jefferson. And then Justin Jefferson went on to have a phenomenal year. We talked about it yesterday with Marcus Hayes about – the Minnesota Vikings laughing their asses off at us in Philadelphia for not taking, well, Howie Roseman, for not taking Justin Jefferson in the spot they could have taken him. And now it's like you were in a spot at six where you could have gotten Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts, and at least one of them. And I think those guys are going to be NFL-wide, game-breaking type talent. At 12, you might be able to get somebody that you could wedge in, somebody that's not going to be the uh, – you're not going to be demanding the high, huge contract at the end of his four-year rookie deal. And you can get somebody that you could potentially, you know, wedge into your own scheme. I'm not interested in that. Like, I want somebody who is going to disrupt things here. I want somebody who's going to – it's going to hurt to pay in a couple of years. I want somebody at the end of the rookie deal, it's going to make you go, oh, man, oh, how are they going to afford him and that and that. Well, you know what? If you're that much of a cap genius, Howie Roseman – then why not take that top tier talent? Why not stay put when you already most likely had two first round picks in next year's draft? Why get that much more greedy and go for a third when you could get top tier talent number six overall and get that guy in your offense immediately for your quarterback, Jalen Hurts? Why? Why not go out there and get that top tier talent? So yesterday, Watching all this stuff, like I didn't need to watch a pro day yesterday to, to make me long for these athletes. But in doing so, it made me think, it made me really hit the reset button on all my emotions going back to the trade from last Friday where we found out the Eagles were moving back to 12. It was It's still very frustrating. It's still mind-numbing to me. And I, I hate the idea that the Eagles are out of that spot where they could pick in the top six and, in fact, going back to 12. But you know what? Here's the thing. If you want to remain optimistic about this, which is your prerogative, it's not mine, but if you do, then here's where you, you start to feel a lot better. If Devontae Smith, if Jalen Waddell, uh, if some ungodly reason Jamar Chase is still available, here's what I know. Kyle Pitt's going to be off the board. But if, uh, especially Jamar Chase, if Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, or Devontae Smith are available at 12 and the Eagles get those guys, then you have cause for, oh, wow, Howie really knew the market. Good for Howie. That's what you're banking on. Howie really knowing the market. Okay. All right. Enjoy your optimism. I'll be over here in the, in reality, basically. So I hope, it, I hope that didn't put the reset of emotions back on for you yesterday the way it did for me in watching a couple of pro days. But it certainly sent me down a spiral, and it also put me in a very dark place. But that's where I'm at right now. Happy NFL Draft Month, by the way. Uh, breaking. 
Flyers are really bad at hockey. They closed the book on March, and now they open it up to February. Just for the record, March closed with Carter Hart being benched. <laughs> Brian Elliott getting his bell rung in net last night. And a lot, a couple of those were not his fault at all with uh, Justin Braun standing in front of the net, getting a puck doinked off of him and then put in the back of the net. What's Brian Elliott going to do about that? It closed with uh, Brian Elliott in net, uh, Alex Lyon getting a net uh, for the Flyers last night, and Carter Hart benched. Woohoo! Uh, that was great, great month of March there. Uh, Elaine Vigneault was asked after the game uh, about uh, really that month. Flyers lost 6-1 to one last night, by the way, for the record. Uh, the fifth goal was a length of the ice empty netter, but still it counts, so it's 6-1 to one they lost. Uh, after the game, Elaine Vigneault was asked about the month of March, and basically uh, I'm paraphrasing the question. Hey, A.V., what the hell happened in March? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to analyze the, the whole month of March here. Uh, you know, I, I feel for my team. I, I know we were ready to play tonight. I know our guys wanted to play well, wanted to do the right things. Uh, for, for whatever reason, like I mentioned, uh, offensively, we were not where we needed to be, and that led to rush opportunities. And defensively, we had a couple of opportunities to kill uh, some plays, and uh, we weren't able to do it. So uh, we weren't good enough. You know, we were going to have the first time in a long time where we're going to have uh, a day off and a day to practice and play. So uh, I'm going to focus on that, and I'm going to focus on getting this group ready for our next game. So he felt like a lot of the mistakes started in the offensive zone. He's not going to recap March, and you know what? I didn't think we had enough time to do that anyway, so actually thank you, A.V., for not going through that. We all know what happened. It was just bad hockey. It wasn't a, a question of getting an energy guy. It wasn't a question of adding another defenseman. It was just all around, all over the place, really god-awful hockey from the Flyers. And hopefully April's a different chapter. Hopefully that's the case, and we'll see. But uh, I'll cross my fingers for it. Um, I don't. I don't know what can just change because it's not one thing. It's not that energy guy. It's not adding a defenseman. It's not getting some uh, amazing offensive talent. It's not some rejuvenation in one particular player. It's it's not that at all. It, it's a whole bunch of things. It's about all that added up together. And then maybe you could start talking about a real legit win streak here. But uh, Elaine Vigneault says at the end of that cut right there, uh, something similar to what he said about a week ago, which was they were looking forward to their first practice in 12 days. So they got that practice, and they got another practice. And around those practices is where they won two games in a row. All right? So they, 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 that was good. Now Elaine Vigneault is saying not only they're going to get a day to practice, but they're also going to get a day off. Okay. Let's let's use that. Flyers right now, starting uh, over the last three games, they're two, and, uh, they're two and one in their last three games. That's a winning record. Let's build on that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hope the Flyers – build on that but here's where the concern comes in and, and and this is just taking away the entire month of march and just focusing in on last night here's what i didn't like av also said uh, after yesterday's game after yesterday's six to one loss that this team was very focused going into this game he said he felt bad for his team because they were very focused going into last night's game they came out, I thought, with energy early, and then that Justin Braun goal happened, bounced off him, back of the net, and then another goal happened about two minutes later where Justin Braun's at the blue line, tries to put one on net, it gets blocked, goes the other way, goal, 2 nothing, uh, 2 nothing Sabres. Justin Braun doubled over after allowing that goal, the second goal. Like, how snake bit am I? And it kind of feels like that's what the team is now as a whole. And it's not just the fact that they lost six to nothing. Look at Travis Konechny after the game where he's asked. I left the question in here so you could hear the question, see the pause, and then hear the answer. Uh, Sam Carcini, Inquire.com, asked him the question. And if you can't hear it, basically the question is, uh, AV said you were focused. What the, what the hell happened? Here it is. Yeah, AV said that the team he felt was really focused going into this game, uh, what happened there on, on the ice that turns it around? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I feel the same way. I felt like uh, it came out pretty good. I mean, um, 
G Coots and Jake were, were pushing the pace for us and you know, they uh they had us going and um I don't, I don't know to be honest again I I, I wish I could uh, give you the answer you're looking for but <clears throat> I'm not sure dumbfounded dumbfounded like N- nobody's got the answer again this comes down to everybody having to be better Jake Voracek, Claude Giroux, Travis Konechny, Sean Couturier, whoever the goalie is going to be. Alex Lyon got in last night. I can't say that enough. Like, it's just a reset button that needs to be pushed. And I was thinking about this yesterday a little bit with uh, Shane Gostisbehere clearing waivers. So he's now a taxi squad guy. Cam York signs his pro contract. So he's going to start things out in the, in the minors. He got asked. Lane Vigneault got asked about Cam York yesterday, and he just kind of gave the obvious answer, which is he signed his pro deal. He's going to start out in the, in the farm system, and then they're going to see where it goes from there. Hey, Cam York, please be awesome really soon because we can sure see you in a Flyers uniform, really. We could use you in a Flyers uniform in the not-too-distant future. Uh, I, I hope that happens, but I'm not banking on it. But looking at uh, Travis Konechny after the game last night, he doesn't have any answers. And the only way you can answer any of these, these questions is to make these questions actually go away. And the only way you do that is by playing much better hockey. So let's just hope, cross our fingers, April will be something totally different. I, I keep on bringing this this example up, but it's really it's two different examples. It's the St. Louis Blues from two years ago that were a god-awful hockey team. They lost, what, 11 in a row? And then they went on a, on a, on a storm. They basically took the NHL by storm from that point on, won the Stanley Cup. And even the Flyers last year had a lot of struggles before the shutdown. And then they won, what, nine in a row, 11 to 12 going into the shutdown? And then they came out, they won the number one seed in the bubble, and then they ended up getting bounced out in the second round. But all of a sudden, things can just change in really any sport. But hockey seems to be the weirdest, where they get one right bounce and they, they go their way, and the next thing you know, it changes the tides of the season. So let's hope that that's already kind of begun, that they've won two out of their last three that I could really go without the six goal games. Let's hope that that can stop. And let's also hope that Carter Hart can come back and, and come out swinging basically uh, in this month. So we'll see how all that breaks down uh, in the not too distant future. Now today, the Phillies are going to get their 2021 campaign underway. I can't wait for that to happen. Coming up in just a minute, we're going to talk to Mickey Morandini, former Philly himself to get us even more ready for opening day today in South Philadelphia. So we'll uh, we'll get that conversation going in just a minute. But right now here at the Steven Singer Studios, I do want to tell you about my good friend Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelers, the other corner of 8th and Walnut or at I uh, at I hate Steven Singer dot com. Steven has everything prepared for you, everything ready for you there. Go to the uh, go to I hate Steven Singer dot com. Use the appointment schedule or book yourself an appointment and go down to I hate Steven Singer himself and uh, take a look at all the inventory that they have to offer because it is spectacular. Thinking about getting engaged, thinking about a nice big gift, Steven Singer Jewelers is where you got to go. And here's one of the things you can get guaranteed at Steven Singer Jewelers. Not just a real jewelry expert showing you all the great inventory, but also this is what they guarantee, the perfect price. So when you go in there, you don't have to psych yourself up. All right, what am I going to do here? I got to make sure I can negotiate. I can haggle. I know I got to be on top of my game. No, no, no. Everything's already set at the perfect price. You're already getting a deal the second you walk in to Steven Singer Jewelers. You'll sit down. You'll look at the engagement rings. You'll look at the earrings. You'll look at the tennis bracelets, the necklaces, the diamond rings, right? You'll look at all of it, and you'll just worry about what you want to buy. It's already a big enough purchase. You don't have to worry about your negotiating skills. You don't have to worry about whether or not the guy next to you is paying more or less than you. Everything's set at the perfect price every single time at Steven Singer Jewelers. Do what I do. Go to IHateStevenSinger.com, the other corner of 8th and Walnut, and make sure you get my, you let my friend Steven Singer take care of you for all your jewelry needs. Steven Singer Jewelers, the other corner of 8th and Walnut. Every time, the perfect price guaranteed at IHateStevenSinger.com. Without further ado, we're going to get to, of course, our social media check-in. We're going to get to our morning rush and our big bet segment. I took another L yesterday. Uh, but right now, let's all put ourselves in a great baseball mood by talking to the one, the only Mickey Morandini as he joins us on the Zados Investments guest line. On the Zados Investments guest line, the second baseman from our beloved 1993 Phillies team also played nine seasons in total in red pinstripes. Welcome to the show, Mickey Morandini. Mickey, how are you, brother? Now you wanted to say that just like Harry said it right there, didn't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> I do. How could you not? I mean, I assume I people just I assume people just yell it at you down the street. Do they not? Yeah, I mean, I get it all the time. It uh, Harry put my name on the map, really. So I still get it, you know, 20 some years after I played and I love it and I hope people keep saying it. <laughs> I I can't imagine to have a name like like yours and have it be pronounced by that voice so often. Uh, I'm sure it brings back a lot of memories whenever you see a highlight or hear a highlight of Harry calling your name. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he was the best. Uh, he was one of the best announcers. He was one of the best, uh, you know, radio or TV guys to hang out with the players. You know, he'd hang out in the back of the plane with us. He was just a, a super guy, and he had a great partner in Whitey. Um, you know, those two will never be beat. They were They were awesome. I, I got to say, uh, before we started the interview uh, earlier today, I was I was watching the the highlight of your triple play in 1992 against the Pirates. And what's so funny about it, it happened so fast. Whitey was just so confused as to yeah. what happened on the play. Have you heard that call? Oh, I hear it all the time. And Whitey's like, throw it to first, throw it to first. And I'm like two, like two steps from tagging Barry for the third out. So, yeah, I think it took everybody by surprise, even me, really. And, uh, you know, I didn't know how important that was at the time. I knew it was pretty unique, but I didn't know I was the first second baseman in the regular season to do it. And I didn't know there was only eight at the time. I was the ninth. So um, it was pretty incredible. And obviously uh, something I look back on, something I'm very proud of. Uh, and as you should be, I believe it was the first in Philly's history, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And that's a, that's a long history to that point, 1992, for a team that was founded in 1883. Uh, yeah, and yeah I, I, I had forgotten, actually, that it was Barry Bonds running the second base on that play. Yeah, that was his last year in Pittsburgh, and that's when they were good. At, you know, that's when they had that great team, kept going to the playoffs, but couldn't make it past the first round. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an incredible play, and I got to do it in front of my family because I'm from Pittsburgh. So that was even, you know, pretty cool, do it in front of your friends and family. And, yeah, there's only been 15 of them, so it's, it's definitely one of the more unique things to happen in, in the game of baseball. Certainly, and I like that it was Barry's. Like you said, it was Barry's last year in Pittsburgh. You know, if this uh, Mickey Morandini guy is going to be turning triple plays on me, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm just going gonna... out west. <laughs> I'm going out west. I'm packing it in. I'm going yep. out west. Uh, Mickey, you are on the show today not just to have fun and talk baseball, of course, but you're also helping out a great cause for the Darren Dalton Foundation. Now, I didn't know this, but apparently you're some kind of master painter, and people can check out this event. Painting with Dutch or painting for Dutch, excuse me. People can go to Darren Dalton Foundation.org to buy a ticket for themselves. It's $75, but that includes painting supplies. You're going to be a part of this on April 23rd at 6 p.m. It goes from 6 to 8 with my old friend, uh, Trey Thomas, as a matter of fact, who's going to be leading the class. Another Phillies alum is going to be doing it as well with Tommy Green. This is a great thing for a great cause, obviously, to support your former teammate, Dutch. Uh, how'd you get involved with painting for Dutch? Well, I'm a part of the, the Dalton Foundation. I'm one of the ambassadors for, for the foundation. And, you know, Darren was like a father figure to me when I was with the Phillies. And he was one of my best friends uh, throughout my time in Philadelphia. So when he passed, obviously, passed way too early um, and they started the foundation, uh, I just wanted to be a part of it. And, um, you know, this is a great event. You know, the, 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 the virus has really put a damper on funding for a lot of foundations, not just ours. And it's, and we're looking for ways to raise some money. We weren't able to have our big golf tournament last year because of the virus. So hopefully uh, this is a big success. And, you know, when I was young, I was a great painter because I was really good. Remember the paint by numbers? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I was really good at that. I can remember me painting those horses and animals and things. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun event. Uh, the Fanatic's going to make an appearance and Tommy Green will be on and, you know, we call it kind of like brotherly love because Trey is going to be the, you know, the eagle on him. He's helping out a fellow uh, Philadelphia Philly and Darren. So we're really looking forward to it. Who do you think will be the better painter, you or Tommy Green? His hands are too big. So I think I'm, uh, <laughs> I think I got a chance to be a little bit better. Now, he's a much better golfer than I am. So I got to be able to beat him in something. So I'm going to say I'll be the better painter. Yeah, I, I will say having shaken uh, Tommy Green's hand, it's like a, a wrestler. It's one of those deals. Yeah, he, you know, he's – my God, he's, he does look like a wrestler. He's got that big upper body with the big bicep. So um, – but we're going to have some fun, and uh, hopefully we can, you know, have a great turnout for this and, and just have a great Friday evening. 
Uh, certainly. And uh, I'll flash it up again and I'll show it again before we get out of here. But here it is for people that want to check it out. Darren Dalton Foundation dot org. You can paint with Trey, Mickey Morandini, Tommy Green as well. April 23rd, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's a Friday night a virtual painting. I do want to stress that virtual painting as we're all still getting ready to all come together. Uh, for events like this. And I, I know that uh, we're at the tail end of this now in terms of baseball with no fans. Uh, almost 9,000 fans will be allowed in attendance at Citizens Bank Park on Thursday for opening day. So that's very exciting. First off, can you imagine, maybe for all the the, the, the craziness that happened at Veterans Stadium, could you imagine an atmosphere with no fans? No, uh, it would be really I, – I, I have kudos to all the MLB players last year to be able to play with no fans – um, that's got to be hard. It really does. You know, the fan is what drives you when you run between those white lines and motivates you. And and when you don't hear any noise um, and you just see cut out, you know, figures in, in the stands, it's got to be really tough. And I think the players did a great job last year of playing hard and playing through it. And um, but it, it's going to be great to have some fans back in the ballpark. And hopefully as a the season goes on and more people get vaccinated, you know, we can increase those numbers. And hopefully by, you know, the fall, I think our hope is to, uh, you know, hopefully get close to capacity again. Certainly. Uh, now, what do you think fans can expect from this this 2021 Phillies lineup? What do you think they'll be giving us this season? I mean, they're going to be very competitive. Um, obviously, we're in the toughest division in baseball. Um, the Mets got much better. The Braves are obviously very good and very young. And Washington's always good. And the Marlins are up and coming. And they kick our butt every year. So um, it's going to be competitive. Competitive. We're going to have to do well within our division. And we're going to have to stay healthy. You know, we can't lose Harper or Rio Muto for an extended period of time. And we need the front end of that rotation to stay healthy. But um, we're going to be competitive. I think we have a chance to make the playoffs. And uh, for me, it's going to boil down to the back end of that rotation and the bullpen. And if those two things are decent or, you know, above average, we got a chance to be pretty good, I think. Uh, I, that that sounds good to me. I, as long as you're giving, as long as this team is giving me those meaningful games in September, I'll settle for that at least right now. And then uh, you know they'll play really well in the middle of the season, and then get my hopes up. I'll scream World Series, and then that's how <laughs> you know how it is. Um, yeah. I, I do want to ask you about a man that, that that came up playing your position, and that's Scott Kingery, who just got assigned uh, to uh, to the minors uh, right now to at least start out the season. What do you think you need to see from Scott Kingery to see more of a, a stable major league ball player? What what, are they, what does this team need to do? What does he do need to do uh, to get more out of him? I think he needs offensively to start from the basics, start from scratch. Because when he's in the minor leagues, you know, he just – he got on base. He stole bases. I mean, he's one of the fastest guys on the teams. Made things happen, hit some doubles, hit some triples, steal some bases, score some runs. He needs to be that type of player. And I think when he got to the big leagues, he hit a few home runs. He changed his swing, started uppercutting, started striking out more. And when you start doing those things, it's hard to change. And uh, he hasn't been able to make that adjustment back to the way he was in the minor leagues. And, you know, he's still young enough. Um, I think they made the right move of sending him down and, and getting him straightened out because he can be a very good ball player at the big league level, but he has to change his swing and start, you know, swinging down on the ball, using his speed hitting the ball, you know, all over the field. He became a pull hitter in the big league. So he needs to make some big adjustments, and it's going to take some time. I, I want to ask you about a couple of other the, uh, the young guys on this roster, but you just mentioned something with the um, uppercut swing and all that. It, this brand of baseball, and it's not just the Phillies, it's, it's, a, it's around all of baseball. It's how the game's played nowadays. Did you enjoy the, the style of play in the 90s and early 2000s more than the style of play right now where it seems like on-base percentage has taken precedent over – batting average, and it seems like walks are a big thing, going deep in counts. Which style of baseball did you appreciate more? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm an old school guy, and you yeah. know, I grew up watching guys bunt and hit and run and steal bases and hit triples and move runners and, you know, score a run without getting a hit. I don't know if you, you ever see that anymore. And that's baseball to me. And, and analytics is kind of obviously – you know, change the direction, the way the game has gone and replay has had an impact on the game and, you know, rules changes. Uh, I'm not real big on the rules changes, but uh, I just think our brand of baseball back in the day was a lot more exciting. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I would agree as, as someone who prides himself on being a baseball purist, I, I find myself almost drifting away from the game a little bit because 
Like, I never minded that baseball was a slow game, but now it's like slow on top of slow because there's even more thinking. And I thought the whole time you weren't supposed to be thinking at all. Yeah, I mean, replay has slowed the game down. And, um, you know, we got to the point where we were changing pitchers every batter, and that really slowed the game down. Now, I'm not a big fan of the three batter minimum for relief pitchers. I don't like it. But, um, you know, baseball was meant to get 20, what is it, 27 outs. So if it takes two hours to do it, you know, in a Greg Maddox game where it took, you know, like 20 minutes to do it. But, um <laughs> You know, I don't think they're. I don't think they need to worry about speeding up the game. I really don't. But I think they need to make it a little bit more exciting again. Yeah, I uh, I, I like Bryce Harper's movement from a couple of years ago of just making the game fun again. And uh, that's a that's a guy I want to ask you about right now. Uh, your old coach uh, Larry Boa came out uh, during the beginning of spring training, as a matter of fact, and talked about Bryce Harper how he needed to be that 40, 50 home run guy, needed to be that MVP candidate type guy. It seems like it's always there for Bryce. That ability is always there. What do you think they need to do to tap into that? I think he just needs to be a little more consistent. He goes through those long droughts where, you know, he he uh, gets into a slump, more much like Hoskins, where, you know, Reese shows, shows a lot of potential. They just need to be a little more consistent. And, you know, Bryce will go through those stretches where he hits eight home runs in a couple of weeks, and then he'll go through a month where he hits one. So just needs to be more consistent, but he definitely needs to be that MV player. Him and Rio Muto have to have big years if we're going to, um, you know, come close to making the playoffs. And Bryce is capable. We've seen it. You know, what was it, 2015, I think he won the MVP. So it's not that far removed, and he was really young back then. So – um, he has it in him. Uh, he just needs to be able to use the whole field, uh, drive the ball the other way, and uh, he definitely can be an MVP candidate, no question about it. Sounds good. You mentioned Reese. We're screaming a lot of times, and it goes back to that on-base percentage versus batting average and all that. A lot of times we're screaming, be more aggressive. Don't pass up on that pitch that's right down the middle or whatever it might be just to drive the count up, whatever it might be. Uh, when you're watching Reese Hoskins, are you sometimes saying, yeah, he could definitely be aggressive sometimes or be more aggressive sometimes? Yeah, no question. And, and, you know, for me, guys that walk a lot or work the count should be the guys that are, that need to get on base. The one, the leadoff hitter, the second hole hitter, those types of guys that set the table for the, the boppers. And, um, I know Reese is hitting in the second spot, but ne Reese needs to be an RBI guy. Hands down. He needs to be a guy that drives in runs, hits home runs. Um, but yeah, he, he needs to be a little bit more aggressive and I think he's starting to understand that, uh, he started to get a little more aggressive, uh, last year. And I just think he knows that when he gets a good pitch to hit, he's got to swing at it and do some damage. All right. That sounds good to me. I'd love to see a little bit more of that this year. Uh, the, the guy that's the young and up and comer right now, the guy we're all going to have our eyes on at the hot corner, Alec Bohm has turned a lot of heads. Um, Charlie Manuel has talked about uh, how he's just got that great smooth swing. What do you see from Alec Bohm, you know, coming into what should be his full, first full season at the major league level? Yeah, he's, he's a typical contact hitter. He sprays the ball all over the field, and he's one of those guys that probably won't go in that prolonged slump because he does have such a great swing. You know, he has a level, swings down on the ball. Like I said, he hits the ball to all, all the fields, and I think the power is going to come. You know, he's a big kid. Uh, the power will come with more experience and facing these big league pitchers more and more. So I was really impressed with him last year, and he's one of those guys with two strikes that – he, he does not want to strike out. He doesn't like to strike out. So he's going to put that ball in play. And he's not afraid to hit a little, you know, roller through the right side for a base hit. And uh, um, he's very impressive. I, I think he's going to be a huge part of this team this year. I'm trying to think, did did you have Mickey Moniak while you were managing with the Phillies in, in the minors? No, he was always a few levels down below me. But mm -hmm. uh, I think he had a pretty good spring, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't watch a lot of games. Really, a lot of them weren't on. And, Mm -hmm. uh, things. But I think he had a. I think he turned some heads this year, and he's still really young. What is he like? Twenty two, maybe. Yeah, twenty two, twenty three uh, years still old. Yeah. Really young, and uh, hopefully he can continue to uh, progress and, and have an impact at the big league level. Yeah, I, I think so, and he's certainly been bulking up a lot over the last couple of years, which is uh, which is great to see. Um, I got a couple of questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to uh, here for uh, for some fun. Uh, but first, yeah. I just want to jump back to this one more time. Uh, painting for Dutch. And one of my favorite things that anyone's ever said about Darren Dalton, actually, Mickey, is from you. And you had talked about his willingness to play through injury. 
And I feel like throughout all the sports now, we're always asking about, well, wait, hold on. Is he really hurt? Does he just need a day off? Whatever it might be. And it seems like guys like you, guys like Darren Dalton, for instance, were always willing to play through injury. How do you make that decision? Well, first off, how did you make that decision? How do you think Darren made that decision? How do you think Dutch made that decision as to whether or not you were healthy enough to play? You know, I think it was different back when we played. I think we had more say in it then. I remember, you know, Darren would catch a 12-inning game on a Saturday night, and we'd have a day game the next day, and he'd come into the locker room, and the lineup was up on the wall there, and his line, his name wasn't in the lineup. He'd go right into Fergosi's office say, I'm fine, I'm fine, Skipper, I'm playing today. And John Vukovic would come out, and you'd see – you know, the backup coming out and Darren's name going in. So we had a lot more say in it back in the day. Darren really taught me, the big reason taught me how to how to play hurt. You know, hey, we need you in the lineup. As long as you can contribute, you need to be out there. And uh, you just don't see that as much anymore. But I think a lot of it has to do with today's trainers and GMs, and they don't want to take chances because of the big money like they used to. But um, like I said, back in the day, we had a lot more say, you know, the manager would come up to you and say, hey, can you play? I don't know if they do that today. Yeah, I, that certainly sounds like what we hear a lot of now is it's all about just the manager saying, yep, the doctor said you can't do it, so you can't right. do it. Right. Uh, Miggy, everybody loves you, the 93 Phillies roster. Really, we just we, we just love it. We, it makes me think of my own childhood, my friend. So I wanted to ask you this. Uh, we do a thing on the show called the Fan Up Five, and I wanted to go back to that time and just ask you a couple of things that people wrote in for us about okay. that 93 Phillies team. Can we have some fun with you? Sure, let's do uh, it. Let's get into the Fan Up Five right now, brought to us, brought to us by our good friends at Fan Up. Download the Fan Up, uh, uh, fan up app right now. May the best fan win. All right, let's get to this one. This is from Maria. Now, this is basically how the 93 Phillies would play into everyday life. So which you basically tell me which teammate from the 93 Phils you would go to for this little fact of life here. All, All right. right. Number one, Maria wants to know, which 93 Philly, uh, Phillies member would ha would you have babysit your kids? Uh, Kevin Stalker. <laughs> Why Kevin Stocker? Well, because we were we were you know up the middle mates and we got along very well and I still talk to Kevin and he's got kids that are my, uh, have are my kids' ages and I just think Kevin would be a heck of a babysitter. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up here, Malik is asking uh, in the fan up five, who would you have fix your car? Was there a car guy on the ninety three Phillies? Gosh. Oh gosh, a car guy. Car guy. I'm gonna have to give me a give me a few seconds on that one. A car guy. Well, I know Lenny loved cars. I don't know if he knew how to f even what was under the engine, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna go Lenny Dykstra. I think he's gonna come in and he's gonna lift that hood up and he's gonna you know look at and see the problem and fix it just like that. What <laughs> Malik in Center City? Thank you very much for that question. Uh, oh, here. Oh, okay. Now this one, I feel like it's like the whole roster. Uh, who is this here? Uh, Mike in Fishtown. Uh, which which member of the 93 Phillies would you have plan your bachelor party? Oh, gosh. I know who I wouldn't have planned my bachelor party. That's for sure. Um, plan my bachelor party. Um, uh, gosh. Uh, that's a good... Crocky. <laughs> Crocky, he'd have, you know, he'd do something fun. He, you know he's going to have a bunch of food and beer at it, for sure, right? So I'm going to say John Crock, he'd, he'd, he'd pull off a heck of a bachelor party. All right, this one uh, is uh, from Pete. Pete wants to know, who would you have pick the restaurant for your birthday? Oh, no, that's an easy one, Darren Dalton. Oh, was he the foodie? He knew all the good restaurants. No matter what city we were in, he was eating at a good restaurant. So, yeah, he'd. He'd, he'd, he'd do us right. Yep. Uh, uh, all right. Now, and the last one here, uh, I don't know where you're going to go with this one here, but it seems like that, that whole team was full of people that were just philosophers. So uh, number five here comes to us from Nicole. Nicole wants to know, who would you take life advice from, from the 93 Phillies? <laughs> uh, you know, I got to do, I got to go with my old buddy, Milt Thompson. Oh, okay. All just right. A, oh, just a down to earth. Great guy. A lot of knowledge. Um, uh, very smart. Um, so I think he would give me some really good advice. Oh, look at that. Uh, Mickey Mordini, thank you for playing the fan up five brought to you by the fan up app downloaded in the app store and may the best fan win. And finally, good luck to you, you know, bringing back all your painting skills from your youth paint by numbers and all that. 
uh, painting for your old teammate Dutch uh, for Darren Dalton and the Darren Dalton Foundation. Uh, go to DarrenDaltonFoundation.org to get more information and also get your ticket, which includes not just the virtual painting, but also the painting supplies as well. Mickey Morandini, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining the show. Oh, thanks for having me. I had a great time. Awesome. Mickey Morandini joining us on the Zados Investments guest line. Mick, enjoy the baseball season, brother. My thanks again to Mickey Morandini. Try that again. Mickey Morandini. Like, you do have to say his name. I like that he called me out for it. It's like, you wanted to say it the way Harry just, Of course I do. You grow up in this area. You can't help but every time you hear. There's a couple of names like that. Um, Ricky Batalico. Ricky Batalico. Like, every time. Even the shorter Rico Bronia. Right, who I don't put on the same level as a Mickey Morandini or a Ricky Vitalico. I, but still, this I hear, I hear Harry Callis's voice. There's just those names that forever you will hear Harry Callis's voice say those names. And whenever you hear those names, that's aha. Uh -huh. that's, that's where you go mentally speaking. So my thanks to Mickey Morandini for coming on the show, and uh, make sure you guys check that out. Like I said, the seventy five dollar ticket. It helps. It also gets you uh, painting supplies and all that good stuff. So uh, it's a it's a great it's for a great cause, as we know. And I'm sure you will have an absolute blast with Tommy Green, professional wrestler Tommy Green, and uh, my old friend, uh, my my current friend uh, Trey Thomas as well with uh, Pino's Palette, doing a great job. Uh, so check that out. But right now, let me tell you about DraftKings and DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app, putting new customers in the center of the action. Bet one dollar on any tournament game. Now that we're down to uh, those four squads, by the way, uh, make sure you bet on any one of those games. And if your team wins. You win a hundred bucks, just like that, huh? One hundred to one odds. You win a hundred bucks. Uh, pick any college team, any of the four right there that are still on the hunt to win one hundred dollars on a one dollar bet. Not too shabby. There's there's no better way to really put your college basketball knowledge to the test than to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. Don't worry if college basketball isn't for you. DraftKings Sportsbook offers daily odds boosts on pro basketball, hockey golf, and so much more. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code FARZY. That's promo code FARZY. When you sign up to turn $1 into $100, if the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the victory. Use promo code FARZY to turn $1 into $100 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, new customers only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And how about our friends at Steak in Maine? Uh, Easter Sunday coming up. They got uh, Easter Sunday brunch going on, so sh uh, check out Steak in Maine for that in the heart of Northeast Maryland. So whether you dine in a more upscale steakhouse or casual bar and patio, you'll enjoy the highest quality prime meats, fresh seafood, world-class oyster bar as well, and freshly prepared sushi. All that and an extensive wine list to boot. So make sure you take advantage of Cavada Sellers Wines from their family to yours. My man, Tony Cavada. Check out Cavada Sellers Wines. Uh, open every day for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Steak in Maine in Northeast Maryland voted number one place for steaks in America by the Travel Channel and the Cooking Channel. I think they know a, t a thing or two about food. So check it out for yourself. Go to stakeandmain.com for more information. And how about our friends at Zados Investments as well? They're an up-and-coming luxury real estate development investment company in the Philadelphia area, and they're crushing it right now in the Philadelphia real estate game. They design and develop top-of-the-line custom homes all around the city, ranging from small single-family rehabs to ground-up new construction townhomes and condo buildings. Zados also works closely with their private investor base to provide them with substantial returns on their investments, ranging from 20 to 40%. Like I said, these guys are doing an amazing job right now in Philadelphia, and they're doing an amazing job in the Philadelphia real estate game. To see some of their properties and also learn how you too could invest with Zados, reach out to info at zadosinvestments.com or visit zadosinvestments.com. So make sure you do that. Uh, now time for our social media check-in brought to you by our friends at Steak and Main, steakandmain.com. Make sure you check that one out. Um, <laughs> Inside the Birds is here for the, uh, the Combine comments. Yep. Uh, all these pro days. I'm going to give you a little bit of a tease. We're not done talking about that. Uh, morning, Taylor. So good morning uh, to you as well. Uh, Nasty Knuckles checking in. Not too happy about what the Flyers have been putting on here. 
Yeah, yeah that, that goes to for both of us. Uh, no, not really all of us. Uh, Taylor's also chiming in saying, what a depressing time. Well, it ain't easy. Ken's checking in saying, Steven Singer is the only place this city can get a ring. Yeah! See what you did there. <laughs> uh, Rob just ch chimes in saying, baseball! I, I agree. I agree. Taylor, uh, don't let anyone... <laughs> uh james is uh excuse me, james is saying don't let anyone on that 93 team uh, babysit your kids your kids will wind up looking like john crook <laughs> you'd, you'd be like all right uh danny jackson we're just gonna go out and grab some dinner and we'll be back thanks for watching the kids you'll come back after like two hours three hours you'll come back and your kids will have a mullet They'll be chewing tobacco. They'll have a big old wad of, of, of a big league chew maybe in their in their in their mouth as well. Uh, and uh, wearing a bandana similar to Mitch Williams. There and they'll be cursing Joe Carter. That's pretty much what would happen in that situation. Yeah, you know what? My my missus would be taken. She would be. I, my my wife didn't grow up here, so she doesn't know really anything about the '93 Phillies. I don't even know if she knows. I think in her mind, whenever I reference that team, she's just thinking, "Oh, that older baseball team." Like, as horrible as that is. Like, I told her Mickey Morandini, and she's like, okay. Like, she just doesn't get it. Uh, but she would know. I, but if she watched tape of the 93 film, maybe I'll show her some YouTube highlights. Actually, maybe I won't. Uh, but if I did, she'd probably be like, oh, wow, those guys seem like they really had a lot of fun. You're damn right they did. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, maybe we'll, we'll show that a little bit later. Uh <laughs> Max chiming in on uh, Mickey Morandini's response to who would be the car guy? And he's saying, uh, well, at least if you missed it, Mickey Morandini said that Lenny Dykstra would probably be his car guy because he liked cars. Maybe just didn't know a lot about it. Uh, Mac is suggesting that maybe Lenny would be able to at least hotwire your car. I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, thanks for everybody checking in on the social media. Check in on our YouTube comments. Appreciate that. Uh, also saw uh, somebody hit us up on uh, Twitter. Just saying how great a name Mickey Moradini is. You're damn right it is. We have that covered. Thanks, for everyone, checking in our social media comments right there. Brought to you by Steak in May. Now it's time for our morning rush. Brought to you by Sky Motor Cars and SkyMotorCars.com. Let's get the, the, the best piece of news we could possibly give you. Let's, give that, let's get that out of the way. Uh, Sham uh, Sharania uh, tweeting out last night from The Athletic that it looks like right now uh, Joel Embiid will be back on Saturday uh, when they take on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Timberwolves have really enjoyed sticking it to me on my last couple of bets. But uh, anyway, uh, neither here nor there. Joel Embiid back Saturday, back at home. Uh, they wrap up this road trip tonight against the uh, the Cavs. I'm staying the hell away from that game tonight, but we can at least look forward to Joel Embiid being back in the lineup. They said he'd be reevaluated in two weeks. He was. He's now doing conditioning. Basketball activities are going fine, but it's now conditioning. And he'll be back on Saturday. In total, we're talking about three weeks with the uh, the, the, the hyperextension. Or excuse me, the bone bruise uh, that he suffered what will be three weeks ago. So uh, look forward to Joel Embiid coming back because this team certainly looks like they'll need him. I do not like the Sixers tonight. Um, to cover at least, uh, they're minus eight going up against the Cavs tonight. I just, I hate this matchup. Um, Colin Sexton, I feel like gives, gives them all sorts of problems. I just don't like the matchup of the Sixers versus the Cavaliers. So I'm staying the hell away from that game tonight. Although, uh, it's not at high altitude. So hopefully the, the Sixers will play very well tonight. Cross my fingers for that. Uh, also want to get this one in here, Francisco Lindor. If you haven't seen it yet now, remember the Mets shortstop, uh, just signed a 10-year, $341 million deal. Excuse me, agreed to terms. The, the source is out there right there. I don't know if it's signed yet, but uh, it's it, it's out there. 10-year, uh, $341 million deal to play shortstop for the New York Metropolitan. So get used to seeing that face. They start their season tonight against the Washington National, 7 o'clock primetime, Jacob deGrom against Max Scherzer. That'll be an exciting game today. Uh, or tonight, rather. And, of course, the Phillies are getting things underway at 3.05 start time today with Aaron Nola on the bump for the fighting Phil. So hopefully the Phillies start out the season with a nice little victory today. That, that would certainly be enjoyable. Uh, also want to get this in. Uh, talking about big bets tonight. Let's move on to our big – oh, I'm sorry. I, I told you we'd get more of the combine stuff. Or combine. Here I am calling a combine. The pro day stuff. Uh, just so you know, we're not alone. Look, here's pro football focus putting this out. 
last night. So this is just to, to set the table. This is yesterday morning, excuse me. Kyle Pitts, a longer wingspan than any wide receiver or tight end in the NFL. 83 and three-eighths inches. inches. Uh, in the last 20 years, that's the longest wingspan. Breaking who else? DK Metcalf's record. Ha! Ah, all right, so we'll just pine over that. But it's just us, right? It could be anybody that could be getting Kyle Pitts, right? It could be anybody. No, no, And Pro Football Focus knows that. Here you go. Uh, Kyle Pitts. <laughs> Eagles fans, after realizing they won't be getting Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase. What is pain? We'll know pain. We're going to know pain real well. We already know pain really, really well. So that's that's fun. Isn't that fun and exciting? Uh, it, it hurts. It, it makes us hurt. So uh, just know that everyone else knows that we're hurting here in Philadelphia. And just know that, that everyone knows that this doesn't feel good to know that you're not going to be getting Jamar Chase. You're not going to be getting Kyle Pitts. And I'm still hung up on that. And I will be hung up on that for the foreseeable future uh, because uh, Howie Rosen basically got greedy. That's where we're at right now. There was one comment. I thought I saw it on our... Yeah, Jason. I'm sorry I missed you earlier, Jason. This is still the Howie is the smartest guy in the room situation, which is why Chase fa uh, fails, which is why Chase falls to him at 12. He'll reach for someone else instead. Ah, wow. What a horrible situation that would be. All right. Let's entertain that for a second. And literally, let's say like for a second here. Um, Jamar Chase available. Watch him not still on the board. Watch him still on the board at 11. Eagles are picking at 12. There he is. We're all high five and thinking we're getting Jamar Chase. Kyle Pitts already off the board. Ah! And the Eagles take Patrick Sertain. If that's what happened, I think that's what I would I think that's what I would need to totally just abandon ship about, you know, trying to give a damn about this Eagles team with Howie Roseman still running it. That that would be, I think, the breaking point for a lot of people. Let me know when Howie's gone, and that's when I'll return to giving a damn. Yeah, or at least in investing my emotions, because everything because I'm still gonna watch. It's not like I'm gonna stop being a fan, but I'm still gonna watch. But if that happens in that doomsday scenario, that's where it just be like, well, what the hell did you think was gonna happen? Who the hell's running this team? Uh, that was our uh, that was our morning rush brought to you by Sky Motor Cars and SkyMotorCars.com. Big bets yesterday. The Timberwolves took it to me again. They uh, did more than just cover last night. They ended up winning uh, their game against the Knicks. Knicks went into that game minus three and a half. Timberwolves ended up winning that game uh, by one point, so I suck still at betting. Uh, I am in a very bad spot as far as that's concerned, uh, so that's fun. Uh, here's what you got tonight. Heat minus three against the Warriors. Heat are hosting the Warriors. Uh, I'm going to go with the Warriors uh, to actually win that game against the Miami Heat tonight at uh, a plus three. So let's uh, let's see the Warriors pull one out tonight against Miami in Miami and see how that goes. Normally, uh, it's always a safe bet to bet Miami in games like this where it's less than three. The spread's less than three because usually the guys go out and party. Not sure that's happening so much right now in Miami. So let's actually go the way of the Warriors and see what they were able to do tonight, see if they can at least cover going, going up against the Miami Heat. Uh, so here's what you got today. Uh, you got the uh, 305 start time. That's what's going on right now for the Phillies. As they kick off opening day, and then tonight you'll have the uh, Sixers and the Cavaliers to at least watch uh, going on tonight in Cleveland. A nice full slate, no flyers to bother you today, so you could just take in baseball and then roll it right over to some hoops this evening. My thanks to Mickey Moore and Dini certainly got me ready for some baseball. My thanks to, to Mickey for uh, joining the show today. It was certainly a pleasure talking to him. Enjoy opening day, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully we can enjoy a Sixers victory tonight before Joel Embiid joins the team again coming back from his knee injury. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks for listening. Make sure you click subscribe on YouTube and also continue to watch us across all our social media platforms. Show will be available on podcast form coming up in just a little bit as well, wherever you get your podcast. For Jim Hyden, who produced the program, this is a Buzz Sports and Entertainment production. My name is Mark Farzetta. Thanks for watching us here at the Steven Singer Studios. Have a great day of Philadelphia sports with the Phillies at 305. And of course, the Sixers going on tonight against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. Enjoy the day, everybody. Enjoy opening day. Have a good one. I'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya.